Hello, Anita here and welcome to the first video of the 52 weeks illustration challenge that I'm planning to do this year. I had a little bit of a dilemma, I didn't know whether I should do a voiceover to this video or not. As you probably noticed, I tend to ramble a lot and it's really hard for me to concentrate for long enough to make a sentence without the ums and, uh, and other breaks. So. And let's be honest, this is a pretty long video, and this video consists only, you know, of me drawing in real time, which is really slow and there's not that much to talk about, so yeah, but I've decided to give it a try. I actually do enjoy talking, as you probably noticed as well. Um, so yeah, if you don't like it, if you would prefer to just watch it to some music without me talking about this picture, and please leave a comment, um, there won't be that many of slow uh, paint videos, but I will definitely take it under consideration if I ever decide to make a next one. Uh, yeah, so that's about it for the, you know, welcoming message. Um, so yeah, as you noticed, and as I've said, this is a slow paint video to kind of, um, you know, celebrate the first theme of the 52 weeks illustration challenge and also because for the for once I, it doesn't happen often but I actually did this whole painting in one go and the lightning was pretty good light lighting lighting not lightning <laughs> the lighting was pretty good and I managed to actually make it in one sitting which really doesn't happen often I tend to get up a lot and just put it away for a little bit and come back to it later so I figured, you know, if, if now's, now's the, the chance to do it, if I want to make a slow uh, paint, then this is, this is the chance. And so I did it. I did it. I'm actually happy with how it came out. It was definitely a pleasure to edit it, because there was no editing involved. <laughs> I just added some, um, you know, filters to make it lighter, because, uh, yeah, I don't know, but I don't know about where you live, but... Winter in Holland, oh my god, the sun gets up at, I mean rises, the sun rises, oh. the sun rises at a quarter before nine in the morning, this is crazy, this is, and, and then it sets at like four, so <laughs> there is no, and you know, the day is overcast most of the time, there's not much sun, um, it's not the perfect condition to paint in and record it at the same time, so until I, um, I get the proper recording and lighting, light equipment. Um, yeah, I have to kind of work around it, and it's a bit of a pain. So yeah, and for once the lighting was pretty good, and so yeah, <laughs> I'm really happy. So about the picture, um, the first week, the first theme for the for this year is a fancy dress. So a really actually easy theme for me. I love drawing clothes and dresses and other stuff. So at first I thought about just making, a, you know, a, a normal dress design to kind of, you know, enjoy it. But then I wanted to, um, I thought to myself, you know, this is the 52 weeks challenge was always about experimentation and kind of pushing the limits of what I would usually do. And so I've decided, okay, this has to be a little bit more than just a fancy dress. There has to be a scene or a situation behind it. I mean, I'm trying to be an illustrator, right? And illustrators are supposed to illustrate, not just paint. That's what painters are for. Um, so this particular scene that I'm drawing has been um, inspired by this book I read. Uh, I don't know why it came to my head just at that particular moment because I haven't read it for a while. Uh, I tend to go back to it um, quite often and the book is called um, A Jane of Lanterns Hill by Lucy Maud Montgomery. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And um, it's definitely, I, I really like Lucy Maud Montgomery. If uh, you're probably familiar with Anne of Green Gables, uh, at least, um, that's like the, the, the basic of the basic for young girl, you know, books. But uh, Jane of Lantern Hill is actually um, about this very unhappy young girl, she's like 12, I think. And she comes from a very wealthy family, but because, you know, she's um, 
not she feels not loved by her grandmother and her grandmother is very strict and um, you know she just feels very unhappy and that she doesn't feel loved by her grandmother she feels that her grandmother actually is jealous of the affection that Jane's mother shows to her daughter so you know growing up in this um, surrounding she becomes very timid and very shy and she feels inferior to you know her peers and at school she doesn't do that very well and everything changes for her when one time you know her um, supposedly dead father you know just writes to, to to her mother requesting that Jane comes for summer to live with him because you know he doesn't know her he wants to know her and uh, you know uh, and so she goes there. <laughs> she goes to live with him and it changes her completely. If you want to, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's a really, really heartwarming book and um, I love it. It's just the way it's written. It's so, like, it, it, it's, you can read it in one go and uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing book. Okay, I'm gonna stop now because I'm rambling. <laughs> So there is this one particular um, a moment in the book where Jane says that her grandmother is actually really good for her, that it's not about that the grandmother is bad, she's just uh, cold. And the one uh, reason that she gives why the grandmother is you know, good for her is because you know she buys her all the things that uh, that she needs that Jane needs like clothes and that once in a while you know she will take Jane to uh, this big you know um, store and in this one little room you know a nice lady will bring dresses and you know Jane will try them on and they will buy them and and this scene that it popped in my head like in that moment when I was thinking about the fancy dress and so I've decided to draw this uh, young girl that had, you know, a dress being either fitted or just, you know, or she had someone helping her to get the dress on. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the situation is because there can be, I like that, you know, um, there can be so many different variations on, on, the, um, on what's happening in the picture right now. Because what, what can happen is that, you know, she has a, a, a theater play and she has her costume being fitted. It can be... Uh, I had this more of a Victorian inspiration. I don't... It's not a very Victorian picture, of course, but I, I was thinking about that period. And back then, you know, the young um, lady, uh, ladies from good families, they would have, you know, a, a handmaiden. <laughs> is that even a thing? Just a maid who would help them dress and make sure that the uh, you know young lady was looking um, um, respectable. Let's call it like this. Another thing that I was thinking when drawing it is my own um, experiences as a child, because I had my mom would actually uh, often alter my clothes or just um, I think even uh, sew them for me at some point and I remember actually standing in the evenings trying on the clothes with the, with arms outstretched and I really wanted to incorporate that as well in the, into the picture so uh, the character the young girl as you can see is she's you know standing there with her arms stretched to the sides and there is this person behind her that's kind of fitting a sash around the girl's waist and the girl is looking behind her shoulders probably making some kind of conversation or just uh, I don't know she's laughing she's definitely happy and uh, I really didn't want the um, the lady fitting the dress to look too much like a maid <laughs> I didn't because that was yeah I don't know I didn't want that I was thinking of this character more as a maybe an aunt even a grandma I know this is a very young looking grandmother but I was thinking of this very elegant lady maybe wanting to spend some time with her daughter maybe just thinking okay this is a good opportunity to have a talk like you know to make a bond maybe that's why the girl is laughing because she's enjoying a time with someone who she's really close to so uh, that's why I've decided to um, have the lady like in sit on the ground in a bit more of a 
bigger dress because I felt that um, well, I was drawing it in the first moment as you could see I wanted the character to like sit on her heels but I've decided that actually looked too much like a maid like the contrast be between the girl and her very voluminous you know a rich looking dress and that the character that was already in a lower position because of the fitting that you know it would speak too much of a maid instead of a, you know just someone spending a nice time together if um, I wanted to make that the contrast go away and one way to do that was to actually give the character you know nicer clothes a richer clothes clothes that would never look good like look good that a maid from a Victorian time would never wear so in this particular reason as you can see here I'm, I'm trying to make this really nice um, comb like fit on the onto the character's hair um, and I was thinking about the stained glass comb, it didn't turn out this way in the end, but you know, I wanted it to be a very elegant lady, so her hair is just put in the, into a bun. Perhaps, you know, perhaps this is just like a morning scene where the girl is actually being dressed um, just to, I don't know, go out somewhere. And because of that, you know, the, the woman is also not very, very completely like elegant and dressed up and, and she's just, you know, casual. <laughs> I am so totally reaching here, but that's actually what I was thinking uh, at that time, so <laughs> it just makes me laugh now. And so now I'm actually trying to make some kind of surrounding uh, for the two characters, and I envisioned this at first to be like a fitting room, like I said before, it's the small fitting room, but then I thought it didn't really fit with the idea of this being um, just open to interpretation. So I've decided just to on a general corner room. And uh, here I'm adding uh, like the small details that I just thought that this character has a, a measuring tape around her neck just hanging and uh, it actually doesn't really leave it open to interpretation, doesn't it? <laughs> but um, I really like I really like adding small details to my um, pictures. I feel that um, you know it, it kind of makes the eye just search around for new things. And I personally really like pictures where I can, every time I look at a picture, I can find something new about it. So I want to incorporate it into my pictures as well. I usually make a tiny little sketches before I start sketching into, onto an actual clean sheet of paper. And in my sketchbook, this room had two mirrors, but, um, since I really, as you can see, I'm not really concerned about this being um, in perspective or isometric. It's just, it's just a little scene. I really, I'm not thinking about anything right now. Uh, and at some point, the girl even looks like she's floating above the carpet. I will add in some point. So, and by adding two mirrors on the opposite sides, and since the mirrors are not that. Um, I would say it, the mirrors are not drawn in perspective either. It looked really flat and it really looked like, you know, it didn't look well. It did not look like a space. It just it looked very flat like a picture. So normally if I was making this painting in, in a bigger size, I would probably work in more details and I had to stop myself at every single point of adding more. I really wanted those mirrors, both mirrors, uh, and they would probably be too if that picture was bigger. I wanted them to be very detailed, to have, a, they both had, they were supposed to be, a supposed, <laughs> they were both supposed to have a very detailed frame, with like a heavy frame, Victorian frame. But I've decided just to add this little arch, the little dent on both sides, just to add like a little bit of an interest point to it. But it, I, I couldn't add too much detail onto the. This is just an A5 size, which is, you know, it's a really tiny painting. It was one of the reasons why I've decided to do it in the first place, because I didn't want that much to spend that much time on it. 
while at the same time, you know, just make it a little bit harder on myself because I needed to um, decide where the details were necessary and where they weren't. So I would normally add more details to the dress itself, but because of all the ruffles, it, it was not necessary, it would be too much. So at the same time, for example, uh, there is a whole space under the characters which is quite bland. There is, uh, except of the little box I am drawing right now, there's not much going on. And so in the further, in the later scene, I'm adding a carpet to it because I knew that I could texture that carpet to add a little point of interest. Now I'm struggling a little bit with that box here. Um, it is not a typical um, sewing box. The original idea was to have this like um, like an old sewing box that would uh, slide from the sides. You know, you had those three levels that were connected and you can just kind of open it so that it would like expand to the sides into little compartments. Um, but once again, that required too much detail and this, this box stood out extremely much from the sketch. So, um, I've settled on an idea of like um, an old chest. I really like those chests, I have one myself, so it was um, a bit of an inspiration. And, uh, and it was just a simple enough shape so that it didn't require me to um, add too much to it to make it look like a, like a, you know, like a chest. Um, and also I had to stop myself to, from adding more depth to it. Normally I would actually um, draw the extra thin lines to indicate that uh, that the wood that the box is made of is actually wood. It actually has substance and here it's just like a cardboard to me. But on this little painting, you know, I couldn't do it. So that was a bit of a struggle, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not very happy with that box. And the, uh, the finished painting, it looks really good. It looks like it belongs, but at, at that point I was... Uh... I, I was, as you can see, I'm just going over the lines, trying to make them at least a bit thicker. <laughs> And then I wanted to add some items laying around and I don't know why I chose to put like a, a, a pin cushion. I mean that's something that you usually would have like laying closer to you. But that was the only item I could think of that would fit. And so I'm here I'm add, trying to add some furniture to the room. I was playing with the idea of adding closets uh, on the side of the character, but once again, too many details. So I've settled on this little um, little table, and I wanted it to have a bit more interesting shapes. So I kind of made it look like a like a drum at first, but it all starts to make sense when it uh, <laughs> when I when I erase the side lines, the uh, vertical lines on the sides. Here I was actually at first, you could see me kind of hesitate there for a second because at first I wanted to draw flowers in that pot, but then I thought, you know, I want to do something different and I've decided to do um, a peacock feathers. <laughs> I have no idea why. It was just something like a free association with Victorian times. Everybody had peacock feathers in the vases, of course, standing around. 
I just wanted it to be a little bit more exotic and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't even knew at the time how a peacock feather um, looked like. I had a peacock feather before, it's like uh, at home. Oh no, actually that wasn't a peacock Oh my god. <laughs> I knew it had like this little round green shape in the middle and that's all. I had to look it up on, on, on the internet to actually paint it. And uh, here I'm, uh, as I said before, when I had two mirrors on those walls, I was struggling to kind of show a bit more depth and that was one of the reasons I've decided to have two walls uh, in both in different designs, just so that there would be a clear indication that there are two different um, planes, two different walls. And uh, even though this is not a um, perspective, I've decided to have the lines, and this is a wallpaper, the lines to kind of um, become closer as, as they go more to the corner. And even though it's not really correct, but it's, um, in my eye, in my personal opinion at least, it achieves what I wanted to do. It shows that there is like some depth to the room. Um, so that's the most important thing. Uh, here I'm adding the carpet I was talking about earlier. In the original idea I had it was a bit smaller, but then, uh, you know, the characters were also smaller and there was more, you know, stuff laying around. But I wanted to, uh, I felt, personally, that there would be too much uh, wood going around because there was already the table, the frame, the, the um, oh my god, how are the, the the only thing I have in my head right now is a Dutch word for those um, pieces of wood that run next to the wall. How are they called again? Plinta. <laughs> That's in Dutch. Uh, anyway, those pieces of wood are, you know, would be also the same color as the floor. So I've decided that making a bigger carpet would kind of break that woodness. And uh, I really wanted it to be very fluffy and I was very excited about drawing the fluffy carpet, that's why. The last time I drew a fluff fluffy carpet was um, in a different painting. I don't know if you've ever seen it, This was it's a painting with this little girl sitting in a bathtub and she sits on a, uh, exactly the same... Um, I mean, the bathtub is standing on a, on a carpet that will look exactly the same as this one because that was the only thing I had in my head. I wanted to draw it again. And here I wanted to add some details to this wall and I'm stopping myself. I'm actually <laughs> just casually, you know, drawing a line again. I had to stop myself because, you know, too much detail. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video and I hope I didn't annoy you too much. <laughs> Bye!